listening. There are loads of people listening, loads of very charitable people who are listening whilst we figure out how the fuck to do podcasts. Yeah, so by the time we get to episode 100, we should pretty much have it nailed, so it'll be good. I do, uh, it's a bit ambitious, but, look, <laughs> but we'll see. I'm, I'm not making any promises, Baz. Is it just me? Yes. <laughs> okay, Baz, I know it probably is just me. But this new feature isn't going to work if you just say yes. Okay. <laughs> I didn't walk out. I didn't. Um, I, I didn't bring it up with the staff. I didn't call for the manager. I didn't do any of that. I did what every British man does, and grumbled under my breath for a long fucking time about it. Have you got that in your Tinder bio, Buzz? Yeah. It's that like hobbies. I love harvesting my own meat. <laughs> Hello, 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 and welcome to another edition of the Mildly Controversial Podcast. Um, Thanks for joining us. Um, If you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, you will notice that we look very different. Hopefully, we look a lot better because we have updated the software and we're using new software to produce this podcast. So, we should be looking and sounding better. Um, I've I've just realised... We're not going to be looking better. Look, it, it'll, the picture will be clearer, right? You'll just get a clearer picture of two stupid old men. Yeah, right? we'll, we'll look better, but shit. <laughs> yeah, the picture will look better, but you'll get a more graphic picture of how bad we actually look. But anyway, the audio should sound better because I am aware that there was a couple of episodes recently where um, my audio was very echoey, and I'm going to hold my hands up and say, that's because I forgot to plug my fucking microphone in. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I don't think the new software is going to help me on that score. I've just got to keep remembering to plug my microphone in. But yeah. we should be looking and sounding as good as we've ever ever sounded on the, on the new software. So thanks for joining us again. Um, we've got some um, we've got some exciting stuff, Baz. Um, the first exciting thing to say is we need to say thank you to everybody who's listening, or everybody who's watching us, everyone who's downloading and sharing and all that kind of stuff because. We had quite a milestone um, a couple of weeks ago for the, um, it was the Our Wives Spill the Tea episode, made it into the top 10% of downloads worldwide, Baz. Pretty good, huh? That is pretty fucking special, isn't it? So, massive thank you. Yeah, we'll drink a toast to that. I'll drink a toast to that with me can of cheap Aldi beer. I've got I've got a run. Um, so thank you so much for everybody uh, to everybody for downloading, for listening. Um, we can see the numbers are getting really big. We're excited about that because we've been doing this for a couple of years and we loved doing it and we were excited about doing it um, even when no one was listening. So knowing that there's loads of people listening, uh, we really appreciate it. So please keep sharing. Please keep um, downloading. And also, um, special request of the week is um, can you – review us wherever you're listening to this or wherever you're watching it can you review it um because i read recently that it's not just downloads that help you get a ranking on like spotify and apple Podcasts and all that kind of stuff it's it's re- it's uh, ratings and reviews and uh, that can bump you up as well so um when we uh, when we got into the top 10 percent of downloads worldwide that was because we asked loads of people to just download it and listen to it and share it and all that kind of stuff and that's really good because that's got us no, we were at massive, massive growth. Um, to keep that growth going and keep spreading the word about the podcast, we really want you to uh, give us a rating. Um, five stars, obviously. Don't rate us if you think we're shit. Um, if you think we're shit, just never listen to us again. Sorry. <laughs> That's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah, well, it is. Yeah, I was going to say on that subject, um, I can't keep making up new email accounts just to give myself a five-star rating. So <laughs> it would help very much if everybody else did. Yeah, but that's on Tinder, Buzz. That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> It'd be like I get a one star on there. <laughs> a brown one. Yes. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> so, um, again, thank you so much for um, supporting the podcast. Do everything you can to support us. And on the subject of supporting us, Baz. Oh, go on. We have had our first ever sponsored beers. Oh, okay. Exciting. Yeah, go on. So, for those that don't know... Um, we decided to let you buy us drinks because that's just a brilliant thing to do, basically. Um, and also, we've never asked for anything. We've never asked for any money. We pay to have this produced. We pay to have it hosted and all that kind of stuff. We've never asked for a penny off you all. So, um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we set up a, um, a buy me a coffee. So, if you go to buymeacoffee.com slash 
mildly pod, um, you'll find there there's a button where you can buy us a beer. Um, so, and the first person to have bought us a beer, Baz, uh, one for you and one for me. Nice. Um, is somebody who you know we've met in real life. It's a lady called Gillian Cowie. Oh, hello, Gillian. Thank you yes. very much. <laughs> so Gillian has bought us our first ever beer. So, to Gillian. I mean, officially, it should be a tenants. Mm. <laughs> As she, we know she's in Scotland. Mm. Ooh. It, doesn't it taste nicer when it's free, Buzz? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much to Gillian Cowie. If you want to buy us a beer um, and you want to shout out on the podcast, um, we'll even put... Your name in literally in lights on oh, the podcast basically. if you if you're watching on YouTube or on um, on uh, on Facebook um, and we'll do that now for Gillian Cowie I don't know where I'll put it but it'll be somewhere Gillian Cowie will be flashing in lights now <laughs> all right so there you go if you want your name there go to buymeacoffee.com slash mildly pod yeah do that lovely stuff so Baz we haven't um, we haven't chatted for a while I've actually properly missed you mate oh thanks it's, um, I, i've I been very busy you have been very busy look at you with a proper job and that yeah um so yeah talk, talk us through well the, the thing that a lot of people would have seen from your social media um and that i saw was that you um you had a trip up to sky yeah not the sky not like up no you know where the uh the old man took his house up into the sky <laughs> you went to the isle of sky i did yeah so um if uh, if you listen to this anywhere outside of the UK, the Isle of Skye is in Scotland, and it's uh, it's a large sort of separate piece of land, an island just off the coast. <laughs> of Scotland. Did you li- <laughs> did you just describe what a fucking island is, Buzz? Well, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to cater for the uh, the different intellectual sort of like levels of our listeners. <laughs> We, look, Baz, Baz, we want to keep this podcast to about an hour. We can't give a dictionary definition of every word as we go along, mate. Well, I was close to calling it a peninsula. Then I realised I didn't know what a peninsula was. So Peninsulas attached. Okay, yeah. So it's, 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 it's a non-peninsula. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the, like, yeah. The, um, the, the clue's in the word isle, okay, which is short go. for island. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, carry on. You were up in Scotland at Island Sky. Yes, so um, as some of you might know, I don't eat meat. I haven't done for, well, since 2017. And uh, in my former life working on an event which is all about hunting, fishing and shooting, I met a a group of guys that uh, are hunters. And um, one of them being uh, twice Gamekeeper of the Year, Scott McKenzie. Uh, So I went up and uh, stayed at a hotel which which he works out of. And we went stalking, uh, which is... It's unusual for someone who's a, you know, who doesn't eat meat. Much as I just said, we can't explain the definition of every single word. We do need to explain the definition of stalking because yes. stalking, right? <laughs> the, 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 fr- the phrase stalking and the definition of the word stalking has changed massively in recent years. Yes. Just, I think you need to explain what stalking is just so that people don't, just so that people know you didn't go to the Isle of Sky to follow young women around and film them on camera or something well yeah so the only the only difference about the stalking i did is it was deer rather than uh it was expensive uh, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well it is quite expensive as well yeah <laughs> so yeah so basically we ended up on uh on a massive hill it's uh, it's in a massive it's on the moors of sky uh so on the first day we did a thing called um uh, simulated game stalking. So you basically still go out in the hills. You still wander around the, around the uh, around the moors, and you have to. And you've got a live rifle shooting, uh, ro- you know, live ammunition. Uh, so you basically have to get in position, and then the, the actual targets are steel targets, and they've got like a gong in the middle, which you have to aim at, which is the point. That was what we did in the first day. That was brilliant. I'm not going to lie. This is the first time I've actually. That sounds awesome. Uh, well, proper firing a rifle. I mean, you know, mm. and, and it's a deadly weapon. You get all the all the all the lessons of uh, and all the guides of how to shoot a rifle. But yeah, it was brilliant. Um, yeah, so you you should come up next year. Um, yeah, definitely. That sounds so, definitely like something I could get involved in. Well, the, yeah. So basically, um, Scott said you should come up and have a go as well. And we could uh, we could make a bit of a podcast out of that. But yeah, love uh, it. And then I was up there with someone who'd never shot before or, or actually, uh, like, taken a deer before. Uh, and then we did that, and he got one on the the third day we were there. And um, it was it – was, uh, it's hard to describe, really. And he was quite emotional about it, 
Mm. But uh, I think that's the experience that he wanted to get as a, as a meat eater. He wanted to experience what it was to, well, to kill, you know, to, to harvest your own meat, as it were. Yes. Which is obviously has, has different connotations if you look at it differently. But um, yeah, no. <laughs> We're talking about Tinder again. Yeah, we are, yeah. <laughs> Have you got that in your Tinder bio, Buzz? Yeah. Is that hobbies? I love harvesting my own meat. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> but yeah, so it's one of those things. It's it, it's it's quite controversial. Um, I, I I went up there last year. I, I well, didn't. Ma- do- I, I'd suggest mildly controversial, Buzz. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, it, but it's not because last year I, I made a post about that I was up there and I got loads of shit and loads of people unfollowed me because they were like, "Oh, it's awful what you're doing." And I was mm. like, "Well, like, a, I'm not doing it," and b like you eat, yeah. You know, these were people that ate meat. Were telling me how yeah. how awful it was, and I was like, well, you, yeah. you know, get in perspective here. I don't eat meat. I haven't killed a deer, but I've gone to experience what it's what it's all about. And people are calling me and my friends like bloodthirsty killers. And th- th- some of these people are actual meat eaters. And I was a little bit that's odd. Mm. Yeah. Look, if if people eat meat, um, see, I'm I, I'd love to come up next year and and, uh, and go with you. Um, not sure how i will feel about it i'll give it a go yeah. but i'm not sure how i will feel about it because i think it's hypocritical to um you know if you've got meat eaters who follow you or unfollowed you because you went um uh, deer hunting um that's just uh, so so they're effectively just um justifying their meat eating to themselves by having somebody else go out and kill it for them 100 percent, yeah and you just think well you know if you're a meat eater and somebody kills that so just, it, it, whether it's you or it's somebody else, then the, the, there's literally no difference. I could totally see it from the point of view of someone who was a vegan or you know or an non vegetarian that would see it as being quite strange. But um, like I said, it, it was for me basically to find out what it was all about. But also, there's it's, it's another thing on that thing, being quite serious. I don't think all vegans only have vegan friends. Like, you know, mm. I've, got, I've got friends who are vegans. They've got friends who eat meat. Are they now saying that, like, you know, that the... That they shouldn't hang around with these people because they're going against what they believe in. It's just, yeah, it's slightly hypocritical. Sorry, yeah. vegans. <laughs> no, no. See, I, I do think that's true. I do think that people, you know, that meat eaters shouldn't hang around with vegans because they're fucking boring. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I'm laughing so heartily is my eldest daughter is vegan, and it's exactly. clearly a joke. <laughs> but, that, but that's the point, isn't it? It's, it's like you know that whole thing of like meat eaters having a go at me as a non-meat eater. Like going onto the, I think a lot of people just view it as like trophy hunting. You know, mm. like these people are going to shoot a deer, just leave it there, or go and cut its head off and just keep its antlers. It's just not like that at all. Because the whole the whole basis of get, being deadly serious about it is a lot of it is conservation. Uh, gamekeepers in Scotland are given numbers by the government of of uh, the amount of deer they have to cull mm-hmm. purely to keep the numbers down because the, the amount of damage that they cause to like to farmland and <clears throat> and uh, and the environment is quite high, but. People just see it as like out and out murder, which uh, yeah, it it clearly isn't. Well, I mean, you are killing an animal, but so is the person who owns the abattoir that your fucking Big Mac came from. So exactly, it yeah. make, makes no difference. No. So does the um the the the, uh, the deer that uh, that Scott shoots do they end up in the hotel? See, none of the none of the none of the meat that uh, that they uh, any of the gamekeepers take on Sky leaves Sky. It's all eaten. On the aisle, and so it yeah. ends up in the hotel. It ends up in restaurants. Yeah, so it's it's not it's not like exported off the island and sold in supermarkets. So it's only, it only goes there. And do you know what we uh, we, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of listeners in the states, and a lot of little listeners in the states. We scratching there thinking, what, what's the big fucking issue? Do you exactly. know what I mean? Because yeah. you know, it just just like you can grow food. And you know, and you know, that's 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 what they see it as. You know, they'll they'll go out and say, yeah, they'll they'll kill a moose or whatever, um, but it'll feed their family for God knows how long. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, it's it's really really interesting. So yeah, I, I look, I, I definitely want to go up there. Um. And it is uh, not gonna lie, it's an unusual pastime for um, a non meat eater to take part in. But fair play to you because I I think that's the it's um keeping population numbers down and it is it's supplying food to the local economy and the local uh population yeah um i don't have a problem with it again like i say uh i'd, I'd love to go up uh next year um i'm all up for uh going with you next year um I, i'll probably be uncomfortable but 
I think it's probably something I need to push myself through because I ain't I, me. It's pretty fucking hypocritical of me to not to you know you know to to shy away from an animal being killed when I eat them daily. I, I think the other thing as well is that uh, th- and this is one of, one of the things that the that I experienced was even if I did eat meat, I would have been more uncomfortable had had not uh, um, been used to the, a rifle. So by the time I'd finished the stimu- sim- stimulated the simulated game stalk, um, I, I I was happy the fact that I would be able to hit the target I was aiming at. Because what you don't mm. want to do is put a rifle in the hands of somebody who's a shit shot, and then you know you wing them in the leg, or you hit them in the neck, or you, know, you hit them somewhere where it's you're not going to get a clean kill. So yeah, that was the thing. And it, and I think I've said in the past that. I'm not against eating meat. I, the reason I don't eat meat is because um, I don't like the way it's farmed. That's as simple as that. Yeah. Uh, and, and obviously there are some um, sources of meat which are done ethically, so I'm quite happy for people to do that. But, yeah, my, my, my stand is just against the farming of it. I'm, I'm quite happy to, uh, to, to look at, like, you know, deer stalking and food that's taken like that and even like this is this goes very much against vegetarianism i even had a, a sliver of the uh, of the deer's heart because that's a tradition that you should have if, you, if it's your first kill there so, you go there you go that's that's how much of a non-meat you are. <laughs> so, i don't eat meat apart from a slightly small sliver of the heart of a beast i've killed myself <laughs> yeah, no, well, obviously someone else would kill but yeah yeah, so, yeah. Right. <laughs> But also, it's uh, a lot. Of, a lot about being up there is just that experience of being up on a, a really rugged moor, uh, mm. and there really is nothing there. There's even though you know thousands of people have been there, there's a likelihood that you've probably stood in a spot that someone hasn't stood in for hundreds and hundreds of years, just because yeah. it's so vast. Mate, yeah. I can't wait. To, I can't wait to go up there in my jeans and my out of this samba and see how uh, <laughs> see how I get on. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll sort you out with some gear. <laughs> Give me a sawn off shotgun. Can I have one of them? <laughs> I, th- I, th- I, th- I think you'd enjoy it, to be fair. No, I think I definitely would. Um, I love the idea of uh, going up to have a, have a look at it. So, Right, well, um, what, well what I got up to um, recently is, uh, is nowhere near as exciting. Well, I'll, I'll be the judge of that. Yeah, no, 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 it is literally nowhere near as exciting. But no, one thing I wanted to talk about was this week I experienced something that boiled my piss unnecessarily and I thought, I know what, I'll talk about that on the podcast because that sounds bang on exactly what we talk about on this podcast. Um, Emma and I went for a coffee um, to a, a, a oh, local... Oh, no, that's, that's really interesting. Um, you know, a local coffee shop, um, small, you know, it's not a chain, it's a, you know, it's a, a, a sole trader... Um, uh, it's all ethical and all that kind of stuff. And I was looking at the menu for types of coffee, and one of them said espresso. Oh, I was <laughs> fucking livid. I was like, for those that don't know, Go on. it's not espresso. There's no X in it. And do you know what? I did a bit of googling today. The reason there's no X in the word espresso is because espresso is an Italian word. And there's no letter X in the Italian fucking language. So there you go. So espresso is just idiots trying to make it sound like espresso because it's quick. Yes. But it's, it's nonsense. The, it's called espresso, okay? That's With what it's called. X. It's got an S. And do you know what? It, it annoys me enough. To, I told you it's unnecessarily boiling my piss. I've gone. Oh, no, I'm, 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 no. I'm going again. I'm going again, Baz. I can feel it rising in me. But it's... Um, the reason it unnecessarily fucking wound me up is because it annoys me enough when people in general life say it and when people go into Starbucks and ask for an espresso. That annoys me enough. But this is a coffee house. This yeah. is a coffee shop. And this is a coffee shop menu that it's got ex- espresso on it. I just want to talk, like I, again, I like to say, I did a bit of Googling on it. Um, and it says, um, obviously, it's an Italian word. And... Uh, I went on uh, Wikipedia because um, everyone knows that the, the whole truth in the world is on Wikipedia, so that's mostly, where I went for mostly, it. Mostly, yep. yeah. Yeah. Um, and it says, uh, some sources state that espresso is an incorrect spelling, which it is, including Ghana's modern American usage. While the espresso spelling is recognized as mainstream usage in some American dictionaries. Oh. So it's Americans, if you're listening, it's your fucking fault. Uh, we know you are. <laughs> and we're going to come around and we're going to teach you again how to say words properly. But it's um, 
But yeah, I mean, to, to be fair, Express was mainly spoken, so I think the reason it, it kind of riled me so much is that it was written down. Yeah. I've never seen it written down like that, and especially like saying a coffee shop, man. Like, like I say, I, I'm aware that I'm getting overly irate about something that doesn't really matter. But hey, <laughs> welcome to the Mildly Controversial Podcast. That's what we do. <laughs> so I'm taking you weren't that sort of bothered by it that you didn't have a coffee there. Did no, I didn't. No, no, I didn't. I didn't walk out. I didn't. Um, I, I didn't bring it up with the staff. I didn't call for the manager. I didn't do any of that. I did what every British man does, and grumbled under my breath for a long fucking time about it. Was it written on one of those like you know, beautiful chalk, you know, chalk painted things? No, it was on an actual menu that was oh, handy to me, mate. printed, Baz. <laughs> yes. At least, at least you've been on that board, you could have rubbed out the X, couldn't you? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I was, I was just there, I, was, um, I saw it on the menu, and I just turned the menu around to Emma, and I pointed at it, and she was just going, oh, fuck. So even she, do you know what I mean? And she is the most, she's my wife, so she has to be the most tolerant person in the world, but even she was pissed off that the, the, the people had, uh, uh, in the coffee shop had called it an espresso. It's just, oh. Oh man, I think I'm, 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 I'm. I think I'm calming down a little bit now, Buzz. I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm working on it. So I was just. So I was. Um, I was just thinking. Actually, what does it mean? So it is not related to express. Uh, it comes from the Italian word for pressed. I think the English version of that is um, like expressed, as in. Um, why, when I'm thinking of the uh, the context of the word expressed in the way that I mean it, can I not think of any other word, uh, any other context for breast milk? <laughs> breast milk is the only way I can, is the only, when I think of the word expressed in that context. As in liquid? Is it, yeah, it, that's the only, uh, I've gone straight to breast milk. Um which incidentally is a uh, is uh, apparently um, uh, it, it's not okay to ask for that in your coffee at the, <laughs> the, the same coffee house. <laughs> what type of milk do you want, sir? Um, have you got breast milk? <laughs> well, I mean, officially you are having breast milk, but it's just not from a woman. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's it. And that is a thing, isn't it? I mean, we'll not lo- we'll, we'll no. not go too long into this, but but it's like it, it it's weird that we find it weird to put human milk in a coffee, but we don't find it weird to take the milk out of an animal that's not human and put it in and and consume it. Yeah. That is weird, isn't it? Well, I've had this conversation. I can't remember when I had it, but someone was just saying that like human milk wouldn't make nice coffee because it's not rich enough. doesn't have, doesn't have the same amount of fat in it. And I was like, yeah, but even so someone's tried it. Right. Yeah, but if we weren't stealing milk out of the tits of cows, we'd never know that. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You can't go, oh, listen, why did you start taking the milk out of that cow and putting it onto your cornflakes? Because it's lovely. We didn't fucking know that until you started doing it, did you? So I need another reason. <laughs> it is a really good point, but I, I think we should save it for another podcast. <laughs> So, uh, like, it, it, yo, uh, for everybody listening, uh, we are not going to do a um, breast milk special. So. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Okay, the one thing I did want to talk to people about, though, is yeah. that um, on the 15th of this month, Baz and I are going to be in the same room again. And that uh, that's, gets me very excited again, because um, for those who have just joined us and who haven't listened to us before, Baz and I are in completely different countries. I'm in Ireland, he's in England. Uh, but on the 15th next week, we're going to be um, in the same country. We're going to be, I'm flying over to England. We're going to record a podcast in Baz's house. And then we are going to go to Cambridge because we're going to go and watch Happy Hour Live. Um, and I was, I, I, was, I was thinking about this um, before we started recording. I was thinking, should I talk about that? Is you, should I be promoting somebody else's podcast on our podcast? And then I realised... Most of the fucking world listens to theirs, and a good amount of people, but nowhere near as many, listen to ours. So it's like, I think we're safe. Yeah, but one day, if, if we level up, and they'll be talking about us, so I think it's only fair. Absolutely, yeah. And honestly, um, 
I've seen a lot of the things, and and obviously because the um, because our podcast has, has grown massively, like ridiculously, um, in the last two or three months, um, I've, I, I see them with their tour bus and they're going on a big tour and they're selling out like eighteen hundred people venues and Fuck. things like that. And honestly, Baz, I'm just thinking like I did. They're just a few years ahead of us. <laughs> We're going to do that. We're going to have a bus with our faces on it, um, which will fucking terrify everybody it drives past. But um, but it's coming for us, Baz, and like we're, we're, we're going to do that. We're just a little bit behind them. But no, we're, so we're going to go and see the, uh, the Jackmate podcast, which is the Happy Hour podcast, live in Cambridge um, on the 15th. Um, and the reason for that is that uh, a good friend of ours, Laurie Knox, um, his brother is Robbie Knox, who is one of the hosts of the podcast. So we're going to go along and see that and support him. So if you are lucky enough to be in the Cambridge area on February the 15th, um, send us an email to mildlypodcast at gmail.com or send us a DM to any of our social media at, uh, at mildlypod. We want you to come and have a drink with us um, in Cambridge on the 15th. Um, it, but if you can't make it to Cambridge, we are going to go live um, at some point in the evening on the 15th with me, Baz, and Laurie Knox. We're going to sit uh, in the Weatherspoons pub in uh, in Cambridge, and we're going to get like, – there's an app. For those that don't know, we're going to play the, uh, the Weatherspoons game. For those that don't know, there is an app you can download where you can order your food and drinks at your table when you're in a Weatherspoons. But if you download the app and we tell you what table we're sitting at and which Weatherspoons we're, we're sitting in, you can send drinks to our table. <laughs> so, yes, if you are in the Cambridge area on the 15th, come and have a drink with us. Just send us an email to mildlypodcast at gmail.com or DM us at mildlypod um, on any of the socials. Um, or keep an eye out on that evening. Keep that evening free so you can um, – it will be kind of – I would say it's going to be kind of five o'clock. I would have thought uh, UK time because we need to do it before we go into the uh, into the gig. Oh God, we're going to be able to batter before we get there, aren't we? Well, let's hope so. It depends how generous our listeners are. So <laughs> keep an eye out for that. Um, uh, we've not decided where we're going to go live yet. It'll probably be either TikTok or Instagram, or it might even be here. We might do a live one on YouTube and um, and Facebook on the podcast. So. Keep uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. Right. Okay. So look, there's. Um, I'm not sure this is going to become a regular feature, Baz. But there's something that I, uh, that I've uh, something I want to do now, which is called "Is it just me?" Okay. As it just you? Which, yeah. Which is basically it's something that has occurred to me today. Um, to be fair, it has occurred to me a few times um, over the years, but something that particularly occurred to me today. Then I just want to know, is it just me, or does everyone get where I'm coming from? Go on, then. Okay? I like the sound of this. Is it just me? Yes. (laughs) Okay. So, next what we're going on to is... um, Bad Baz, I know it probably is just me, but this this new feature isn't going to work if you just say yes. Okay? (laughs) Right, uh, go on then, hit me up. <laughs> right, so, is it just me, but if you piss in the low down urinal, do you look like a pedo? Because I feel like one. For like a, a little bit of backstory, for people with people without penises who don't use male toilets, um, quite often you will have urinals, urinals, take your pick on the pronunciation, Um and you will have like four or five at an adult height, and then you will have a lower down one, which is I presume for children and accessibility for people of shorter stature, <laughs> such as yourself, Baz. <laughs> I was so waiting for that. <laughs> I hadn't planned that to be honest, but it had to. When it popped into my head, I had to let it go. Um, but yeah, it's just th- there is one that is clearly when you look at them, it looks like that's the kids' one. And if if the other ones are full and you have to go and use that one, is it is it just me that feels a bit like a pedo when I'm when I'm using it? And do you know what? It doesn't make any sense because the definition of a pedophile is not somebody who pisses where children piss. Yes. Right. Again, 
Baz, we don't have to explain the dictionary definition of lots of words tonight, and we definitely don't have to explain the dictionary definition of a paedophile, no. okay? It's definitely not somebody who pisses where a child pisses. But for some reason, when I piss in that low-down one, I do feel a bit like a pedo. So basically you're saying you feel like you're violating something that you shouldn't be doing. I, ju- I just feel like... I mean... There's nothing to say you can't use that one. Do you know what I mean? It's not like it's got a sign above it saying, this is only for children. It's not like I've, I've, I've wandered into a child's playground for a piss. Do you know what I mean? I've just gone for a piss in the one that's slightly lower down, but I do always feel a bit kind of like I should be signing a register after I've used it. Well, we can, uh, we can ask people to uh, send emails in to let you know whether you're the only one. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't think uh, there's anything strange about that at all. Well, I mean, you wouldn't, because it's the only one you use without having to get on your tiptoes, isn't it, Baz? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah, look, well, I, 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 when I thought of that today and I thought, do you know what, I'll speak about it on the podcast, I wasn't thinking straight, Baz, and I wasn't thinking of the, the, the fact that, like, say, you have to get up on your tiptoes to use uh, normal adult height ones. So um, I'm going to have to ask other people. So um, no, Normal size yes. people. Yes, normal-sized adult grown humans um, with penises. Um, <laughs> please let me know. Um, on uh, Send us an email or get in touch on the DMs. Um, and yeah, tell us. Um, does anyone else feel like a pedo when they use the low-down toilet? I think you might be in a very small group of people that feels that way. Yeah, and I think this probably is going to become a feature, Baz. Is it just me? And... <laughs> The accuracy of you stopping me after a second and saying yes <laughs> is probably going to be how this feature goes in the future. Well, look, I'm going to get, if you're going to do it a lot, I'm going to get basically two paddles, one yes or no, and just throw away the no one and just keep the yes. <laughs> Save your money on the no. <laughs> exactly. Save your money on the no, Baz. Um, I'm thinking that if, yeah, if we carry on this feature of is it just me, uh, might even have to call it is it just Mike. Yes. <laughs> I've got a feeling it will end up being that way. So, have you got another one? No, that was it. It's just, <laughs> okay. I was, I was, um, I was playing golf today, and I went into the, uh, I went into the gentlemen's toilets, and I just saw it, and it occurs to me every single time I go in there, because there is, um, there is a. Do you know? We'll do this on another podcast, and it'll be a very visual thing, Baz. <laughs> is but there is, um, there is a right and wrong. People don't understand this, but there is a right and wrong for which, um, and. To be fair, it is me that decides which is right and wrong. But there is a right and wrong um, urinal to use, depending on who is in there at the time yeah. and where they are stood. Yeah. So uh, th- there's, uh, there's, there's a meme for it, isn't there? So there's three and someone... And you, no, so if you go to the toilet and there's three empty ones, you should always use either the left or the right to give someone else the opportunity not to stand next to you. Yes, and also, if somebody's already on the one on the left, you have to go on the one on the right. You can't go on the one in the middle because it looks like either you're interested in them sexually or you just want to look at the cock. Look, you you know me, uh, and I'm a bit contrary sometimes. I've been into a a bank of ones where there are, say, seven or eight, and one person in there I've got and stood next to them just because it makes me laugh. (laughs) <laughs> right Baz if that's what you regularly do I want you to upgrade if there's a bank of seven they're having a piss in number one I want you to go and piss in number one at the same time as them <laughs> okay challenge accepted <laughs> do me a favour though don't do it when we're out in Cambridge on the 15th because we'll get kicked out of the pub but of course this has changed now because quite often particularly in London a lot of them have partitions between the, the urinals now so it does make it a lot more awkward if you want to go and share one with them because you've got to sort of squeeze yourself in there next to them, haven't you? I, Buzz, I, nobody said it was going to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay, well, there you are. Cambridge, Cambridge will be the... the, the, the no, 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 look, I'm forbidding it from Cambridge, Buzz. We cannot do it in Cambridge. I want you to do it somewhere I'm not because I want to carry on drinking after you've been thrown out. <laughs> right, Buzz. Um, so, um, before we go... Um, I want us to, um, this is the mildly controversial podcast, so let's go with um, a mildly controversial opinion we both hold, um, or we each hold. Okay. uh, Fuck it, where's Laurie Knox when you need him? I need need grammar advice. (laughs) 
No, no in fairness, it's just uh, we have we, pretty we much We each agreed. hold, not yeah. we both. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. we, we'll find out if we both hold the opinion once you've said it and I can either agree or disagree. Which uh, which episode number are we on now of, of the mod? Oh, uh, uh, this is 21, 22, yeah. something like that. Yeah, and we still haven't worked out the format completely, have we? <laughs> no, 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 no. But thank you, thank you, everybody, for listening. There are loads of people listening, loads of very charitable people who are listening whilst we figure out how the fuck to do podcasts. Yeah, so by the time we get to episode 100, we should pretty much have it nailed, so that'd be good. I do, uh, that's a bit ambitious, but, <laughs> but we'll see. I'm, I'm not making any promises, Baz. <laughs> right, um, okay, I'll go first. Go on. Um, Again, this is this is something that is, um, uh, yeah. D- 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 it, by definition, the things we come up of, uh, come up with on here are um, quite often things where it just winds us up when it really shouldn't do. But yeah. um, okay, mine, my, my mildly controversial opinion for this week is: um, stop charging me a quid to use a fucking shopping trolley. <laughs> I mean. Charging, or you, when you're renting it and getting it back, aren't you? It, you All right, it, let me rephrase it. Stop making me rent a fucking shopping trolley for a quid. Yeah, well, I mean, how much is a shopping trolley worth? I think it's quite a good value, really. Well, it is if you keep it, and I'm coming on to that, Baz, right? <laughs> because, because, do you know what? It, all it is is just a pain in the arse. Yeah. Because we, uh, you know, more and more we're carrying less and less money. Yeah, yeah, less and less change in our pockets. Everything's uh, contactless. We're tapping all the time. Um, that, that's uh, that, we're tapping all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, what are we tapping in Ireland? That means like contactless. Um, but yeah, so we're doing that more and more. So we are using cash less and less. So I've hardly ever got cash in my pockets, and not only that, um, some some supermarket trolleys here. It's a euro oh. to rent to rent one. Uh, sometimes it's two euros, um, and also if I go shopping twenty minutes down the road, it's it's at one pound sterling. So I, I just I, I don't understand. Um, I don't understand the need for it. Okay, I understand the theory of the need, but you've just illustrated that it's fucking pointless. Yeah, because the theory is if we charge for the trolleys, they're not going to go wandering off. Well. If somebody's looking for a supermarket trolley and think, I'm going to steal a supermarket trolley, right? And I'll go up and steal. Oh, no, they're chained up. It'll cost a quid. Oh. If somebody's going to steal a supermarket trolley, who is going to steal a supermarket trolley but decide it's not worth a pound to buy? It just fucking doesn't make sense. So all they're doing is they're just massively inconveniencing shoppers for just... Just to stop, like maybe zero point zero 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 five percent of the population who are thinking of stealing a supermarket trolley, but don't think it's worth a pound to buy. It's bizarre. It is bizarre. I mean, and we we should clear this up. It's not actually renting. You're putting down a safety deposit, aren't you? We should get your deposit back afterwards when you've used it. But the weird thing is, like, so you know, you can you can buy off off like a charity. A, a a pound sized marker, so the charity yeah. gets your pound and they give you a marker. Those things, like you're supposed to attach to a key ring, right? But I never yep. have one. Um, the, the, buzz, 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 buzz! I've got one, yeah. right? But it's shaped like a fucking pound, <laughs> and the supermarket trolleys here are either a euro or two euros, and they don't fit. I, I think there's a hack as well, which you can like uh, tape two twenty pence pieces together, and it does the same thing, but. Baz, Baz, I've got a better hack than that, Go right? On. The the ones here, the Aldi ones, are two euros. A two pence coin works. Oh, there you go. Now that, right, you're basically, Baz, getting a thousand percent return on your investment <laughs> because you're paying two pence and getting two euros worth. It's not a thousand percent. I can't be asked doing the maths. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. It's a big number. Yeah, it's, it's hundreds because there's the exchange rate in there as well. Do you know what I mean? But I'm just like I, I can I can, you know, you're getting an instant return on your invest. You're investing two pence and getting something worth two euro instantly. Um, but I also don't carry two pence coins round because I live in a country where the currency is euros. So I've either got a two euro in my pocket when I need one euro, or I've got a one euro in my pocket when I need a two euro, or I'm going across the border 
to uh, to a supermarket and I need a pound and all I've got is euros in my pocket. It's just, again, I understand the theory, but the theory just doesn't fucking work in reality. There is nobody who is thinking, I'm going to go and nick that trolley with, that's got a quid in the pocket. I'm going to nick the trolley. Oh, oh no, no, I'm not shelling out a fucking pound that I can get back if I want to bring the supermarket trolley back. It just doesn't make any sense. I'd, I'd love to know, like, you know, if there was a, a, a statistic somewhere which showed the amount of trolleys that were left in, you know, streets and in at the bottom of rivers compared to how they were before they had pound coins in them. I bet it's yeah. Sick, yeah. <laughs> and and do, do you know what? The the, the people who are going to nick a trolley just to piss about with it, right? And they're entertained for a couple of hours trying to price the fucking quid out of it anyway. <laughs> exactly. Do you know what I mean? You've just given them more stuff to do with the trolley now they've nicked it. I mean, if you were really going at it full-heartedly, you'd probably take a pair of bolt croppers, cut the end off, uh, of the free end off one in the, in, the, in the supermarket and take it around and just pinch all the pound coins out of the uh, ones that are being currently used. There you go, Baz. There you go. I think you've, uh, I think you've just encouraged some scroats to, uh, to take up a new pastime there, mate. <laughs> it seems like a lot of work, though, doesn't it? <laughs> Again, it does. It's a fucking quid. Just stick a quid in it and you can keep it. A trolley is something you put your shopping in while you're going around the supermarket um, to be able to put it into your car and then take your supermarket trolley back. Um, do you know what, Baz? I've just realised that quid's not to stop you nicking it. It's to make sure you take it back so they don't have to pay somebody to collect them all. Uh, well, they still have to go and collect them on mass to bring them upstairs, don't they? <laughs> upstairs well if, you know, if they're out in the outer reaches of the car park they still have to employ someone to bring them back to the front don't they yeah but bring them all at once though yeah yeah instead of going collecting them from around oh Baz I've just realised that it's actually quite a sensible thing <laughs> oh bollocks I want to know who thought of that they're a genius aren't they well there still should be some kind of fucking <laughs> st- still should be should be some kind of law that makes sure that all of them take the same thing yes because Tesco take one euro, Aldi take two euros. Not having it. <laughs> oh well, we, we've 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 nailed that one anyway. <laughs> you say that I've just I've just humiliated myself. <laughs> well, it makes a change that you've done it, not me. So, oh, Baz, have you got one I can humiliate? Humili- well, fucking hell, I can't even speak. There's me. I've had uh, I've, I've had a can and a half of Aldi beer. Um, have you got one we can do now, Baz, so I can humiliate you, so I can feel better about myself before we finish the podcast? Oh, God, yeah. This, this is definitely in the humili- humiliation scale. So I've been working, as you know, the last couple of weeks, um, and this is just an observation more than anything else. And it's basically that ankles and wrists are a really shit design. <laughs> oh, continue, because I think I could be all in for this, mate, well, but continue. So... Uh, a lot, the job we've been doing it involves a lot of like carrying heavy objects, moving stuff around, you know, taking stuff off fans, which involves your ankles and your wrists quite a bit. They always come under the most strain when you're lifting something heavy. Now you'd think like your body's designed to carry these things; it's got the strength to do it. Your wrists and ankles should be a lot more robust, but they're not. They're fucking useless, so particularly as you get on like as a as a ninety year old man like me. So <laughs> I was just going to say, us. They used to work. Yes. <laughs> it's the same as mine, mate. I played golf today, and it was the third round of golf I've played in three days. Um, and then I did a spin class, um, because I'm a spin coach, people. If you want to come to my spin classes, then email us at maldicpodcast.gmail.com, and I'll tell you where I do it. Mates, um, mates. But, yeah, yeah, no, fuck that. No. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, and I did a spin class, and then at the end of the spin class, I get people to... To, to kind of loosen the ankles and the wrists. Fuck, I felt like I'd been shot in the wrists. And, and, and you know what? Golf isn't supposed to hurt your wrists. I obviously do it badly and I grip too tightly and all that kind of stuff. It, 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 it's on me. Um, but yeah, really, really hurt. I, I, I just wonder though, Baz, um, would you have had the same uh, grumble maybe 20, 25 years ago? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe, maybe the uh, uh, maybe maybe the grumble more is about the aging process than the fact that you, wrists and ankles are stupid. Well, they're, just, they're just not designed for long term use, then, are they? No, exactly. Um, but that's just uh, you know, just off the top of my head. Is um, is your right wrist any weaker than your left by any chance? No, it's much stronger. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, it's like, for anyone who's not met Baz, his, uh, his right forearm's the size of fucking Popeyes. His, uh, his left forearm's like olive oils. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, I get it, I get it. I get it. So, so how did that manifest itself in your, uh, in, in your job then? Well, just just basically after a, after a week of like carrying heavy counters and climbing in and out of vans and you know using your wrists to sort of like particularly that kind of using a screwdriver thing, it does get fucking sore. So um, yeah, it's just been I got to the end of that uh, of the week and it was like these things are hurting like fuck. I want some new ones, but you can't get new ones because they're not replaceable, are they? What wrists? No, it's not a joint. It's not like a. I mean, you can get hips and shit, can't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, to be fair, I'm surprised you haven't at your age, Buzz. But <laughs> I've, the, I've already got yeah. one lined up. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. You can, yeah, you can get replacement hips or replacement knees. I think they're definitely feeling it after a week of working. So I've, uh, I'm going to do some exercises this week. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, make sure you exercise them both equally, Buzz. <laughs> and on that bombshell <laughs> of Buzz having to. Self pleasure with both hands, not just one. Um, we will leave it there for this week. Thanks so much for listening. Um, really appreciate everything you do for us. Um, as I say, we are loving um, the fact that so many more people are listening to us now. Um, we do this because we love it. Um, we really enjoy it. It gives us an opportunity to have a drink together when we live in two different countries. But um, the fact that we now know that loads of people are listening is massive to us uh, and we really appreciate it so please keep doing what you can to um, help support the uh, the podcast and help grow it um send it to loads of people um as i said at the start if you know if you like it send it to uh, send it to people you like um if you don't like it um frankly what the fuck are you doing still listening you're all you're, you're nearly finished now we're 50 odd minutes in you idiots <laughs> Anyway, thanks for listening. We will see you next time. Ta-da.